Welcome to Digital Asset News, take the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, it has been a wild ride uh, over the last uh, 7 to 10 days. And this is a new article from Crypto Briefing and talks about, does Chainlink scream sell despite all the new highs? We'll get into that in a bit. Also, gold and Bitcoin prices pull back as U.S. jobs data beats expectations. And this was actually coming, but the real question is, can we trust it? Also, Coinbase has a little bit of a glitch, which leads to massive gains. And a new wrinkle in the quantum computing. And the article asks, will this quantum computing breakthrough save Bitcoin and cryptocurrency? This one gets wild, but it's pretty interesting. So we'll get into all that, but first let's take a look at what's going on with the market. So today it is August 9th, it's about 12 o'clock, high noon Texas time. It looks like Bitcoin is uh, indeed has retraced a little bit. Uh, 11.5 down about a percent, seven days, but over uh, 2% down. Ethereum 387 just really couldn't hit that $4 mark. I was kind of hopeful, but here we are. XRP, 28 cents, watch out. Tether is Tether. Chainlink, uh, I don't know what the hell's going on here. Because, because you got uh, Tether here and then Chainlink at six and then Bitcoin Cash at five. I'm not a genius, but I think it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. But uh, what are you going to do? CoinGecko, a little bit of a, a, a glitch. So uh, Bitcoin Cash, hey, maybe that's at fifth, maybe it's at sixth. I have no idea. Uh, Cardano, uh, 14 cents, up about 0.3%. And uh, they are going over the whole staking thing over the weekend, moving over to that uh, proof of stake. So uh, hopeful about that, but we will see. Bitcoin SV, sure. Litecoin, Binance Coin, Crypto.com, uh, pretty much... Um, uh, straight across the board, except for Tezos. Tezos making a massive run here, 14.3, up 22% for the week. So uh, congratulations, like Tezos holders, uh, not too shabby. And then, wow, VeChain is up another 7%, and they're looking at uh, over two cents. Uh, there was an article we talked about uh, yesterday, which went over the fact that VeChain has partnered up with uh, Italy's uh, big, huge uh, pasta manufacturing, and how they're doing things with the uh, with the virus and uh, uh, regulation, and they're using. V chain so uh, pretty big pretty big news in that in that uh, realm and uh yeah cosmos 24 percent cosmos holders congratulations to you i don't know any cosmos but uh i mean someone a lot of you must because you're in the top 20 and uh not too much down here digibyte seven percent look at almost three cents wow congrats digibees and uh the band protocol makes another massive run 20 percent 262.4 percent for the week and i took a look at band um because people kept talking about you know it's another oracle just like chain link and so on and so forth but uh i gotta tell you it's it's got three smart people that is the team that i can see uh i'm not gonna take anything away from them. they look super smart mit grads and all those things but um, it takes more to uh, really make a fantastic business it's not just an island so we will see how it all works out and uh, maybe who knows i don't know if it's actually in production has a main net or is just a white paper uh, but a lot of it is speculative i'll just leave it at that anyhow let's break into today's top stories so first up chain link scream sell i mean come on uh, i think we saw that coming uh, there's been a huge, massive run-up. That's what people have been talking about. Even people that are in cryptocurrency actually text me like, hey, man, what's up with this chain link? I'm like, what the heck? Usually people talk about Bitcoin, but here we are. So what's going on? Despite new all-time highs, different on-chain and technical metrics show that Link is ready to retrace. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's going to as well. Am I going to sell uh, and uh, play around? No, I'm not. Data reveals that the number of link-related mentions on different social media networks surged dramatically. The numbers suggest that the market has entered FOMO around Chainlink. And I got to tell you, I put out a little uh, commentary on the community tab. And I said, hey, you know, um, Chainlink is one of those projects that uh, it's, it's great to invest earlier on. So if you're looking to, to get in right now, and you really have to get in right now, that is a definition of FOMO. And I know some of you are like, who cares? Who cares if I get in right now? Because I know it's going to uh, $100, $500, $1,000. Well, maybe, maybe it is. I don't know. But I can tell you just from experience, back in 2017, I thought the same thing about everything. I was like, you know what? It's going to the moon. You can't stop me. What goes up stays up. And uh, forget all that other stuff. I, I know what I'm doing. And it didn't work out. Um, I'm just giving you caution. And I know I can be a wet blanket to the party, but it's just because I just don't want anybody to, you know, sit around going, man, what the heck happened to all my money? So uh, you can get into it. It's all you. Uh, but I would just tell you what I do. And that is just dollar cost average in and I'm pretty boring. <laughs> That's just, just how it works. Um, this is one of those days when I'm happy that I dollar cost average in uh, months and months and months ago. So 
Uh, that's just how it goes. Moving on, the high level of notoriety is not necessarily a good sign, according to Dino Ibis Begovic, head of content and SEO at Santiment. And uh, he states, within the next 12 days, after a coin claims a top three position on our list of emerging trends, its price drops by an average of 8.2%. So in the next two weeks, he's saying you're going to see on average a drop of about 8%. And uh, Chainlink right here is number one. And then further into it, uh, the analyst, uh, what he's talking about here, maintains that when the crowd pays increased attention to a cryptocurrency in line with pumping prices, then that movement is usually followed by a steep correction. And that's where we get that 8.2%. So we will see. And then uh, further down, uh, we get to TA. So uh, I think if you've been in the channel long enough, you know I'm not a big TA person, but uh, there's, it is interesting. I mean, it is interesting. Um, they talk about the near-term future does not look good for the bulls. And I got to tell you, not even knowing TA, um, you know, if you have this kind of parabolic spike, there's going to be a correction at some point. Do I know when that's going to be? No. Do TA people know what it's going to be? No, but they can make guesses and they have percentages and it may be 52% yes and 48% no. Uh, so if you're in a TA, fantastic, just not my thing. And uh, a lot of t some TA people are really good at it and they're fan and they get, you know, crazy predictions and they make them right, but I'm just not into it. Anyhow, moving on. In the event of a correction in the blocks global in out of the money model reveals there is a crucial supply wall underneath this token that could hold falling prices at bay. Roughly 27,000 addresses had previously purchased nearly 30 million link between $7.60 and $9.70. So what he's saying is that there's a huge support level right now at around $7.60. That's when people, you know, figured it out and kind of got into it. And I can just say, I mean, I got in there uh, before there, before that time when it was the boring time. The boring time is uh, when no one's really paying attention to it. And you're like, I think this is going to go well because of all my research. And uh, actually one of those things that worked out for me. Now, have I made 100% correct calls? Absolutely not. Um, I have made some losses. I have made mistakes and that's just how it is. Uh, I'm not perfect. No one's perfect. But um, I will tell you this. I think my good choices will outweigh my bad choices by a factor of who knows, 100x, 1000x. And that's the big thing. Just find a project that you believe in, that you believe in the community, you believe in the message, you believe in the team that's behind it, and you believe in what it's actually trying to solve and go with that. It doesn't I'm not a person that wants to put all my eggs into one basket. I diversify as much as I can in the cryptocurrency space. And those are the ones that I uh, have actually purchased. Uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Chainlink, Cardano, EOS, VeChain, uh, Tezos, those types of things. And uh, I've talked about why, but um, that's just how I have it. Anyhow, moving on. The GIOM cohorts show that the next considerable support barrier lies between $3.70 and $4. Here, over 26,000 addresses are holding roughly 15 and a half million chain link. So um, you're looking at 760, if it dropped below that, now we're looking at around you know $5, $4, 370. And I gotta tell you, this is the power of dollar cost averaging. Uh, you just, like I said, you get into a project that you believe in, you don't dump everything into it at that point, because you never know, it could go you know massively down. I mean, I've bought at around $3, and if I could have dumped all into that, but it went down to like 245. And then I, you know, next week I bought into that. And it's the same thing every single week. On some cryptocurrencies, I buy them every single day. On others, I buy every three days, and others I buy every seven days. It just depends. And then uh, right now I will probably scale back a little bit as the parabolic you know, rise goes up, but I will always DCA, and uh, that's about it. And then people say, you know, well, well, you should, we should sell and take some profits. Well, I could, and I could do that, and I definitely might think about it. But right now, I'm just focusing on the long term. Where are we going to be in the next uh, year to three years? And uh, that's my vision. And uh, I will, t and of course, I'll say this: it's a lot less pressure. I mean, it's a lot less pressure when when you dump everything in because you're like, okay, I think this is where it's going to be. I mean, you can dump in uh, five hundred, a thousand, ten thousand. 100,000 and just hope it goes up. But when it doesn't, you're like, ah, oh, man. And there's that feeling, that pity or stomach, like, shoot, I shouldn't have done that. And I've been there and I know it. So uh, that's why I don't do it anymore. <laughs> that's it. So to finish up, it says, still, there's another crucial fundamental metric that indicates trouble. And this one was concerning. Uh, the number of new daily wallet addresses joining the network has been declining 
while prices have been trending up. So what's going on there? And here's my final thoughts. Maybe these new wallets uh, are not being created, but maybe it's like people like me, dollar cost averagers, who are slowly accumulating uh, more chain link, more Cardano, more what potato foot, whatever it is. And, you know, like I said, like we're buying it every day, every three days, every seven days or whatever else it is. And our wallets stay pretty much stagnant yeah, because, I mean, we're not creating new wallets. I mean, I could, but I don't see the point. So that's one of those metrics. But it could be that same thing where, hey, you know, people are just uh, buying this up. We're not getting new people in and uh, we will see how it all works out. So let me know what you think in the comments section. Uh, let's move on. So next up, this was uh, concerning, but it made sense. Gold Bitcoin prices pull back as U.S. jobs data beats expectations. So at the time of the writing, this is from Frank Chaparro. Uh, at the time of writing, gold was trading at 2000 over $2,000 an ounce, down from 2100 on Thursday after the release of better than expected jobs data. The U.S. Labor, uh, US Labor Department uh, non-farm payroll report noted that US or the U.S. added more than 1.7 million jobs, surveyed economists by Reuters expected 1.6 million new jobs to be added as reported by the FT. So they were expecting 1.6, they got one, they got 1.7. I gotta tell you, I don't see how this is possible. I just do not see it, how this is possible in the, in the economy that we have. We've had like uh, between 33 and 44% of uh, small businesses either saying that they are closing or will close because they cannot deal with what is going on with the current economic situation. So if you have all these small businesses closing, where are these jobs coming from? Uh, I just don't know. And uh, the Department of Labor, uh, has done some uh, tricky stuff in the past. So I'm just not sure that I believe in those reports wholeheartedly. That's all I will say on that. Moving on. Traders had been piling into gold as fears stemming from uncertainty around the global economy and mounting central bank debt make inflation hedges more attractive. As for Bitcoin, it's down more than 2% after closely touching 12 grand late on Thursday. And I got to tell you, this is what I've always kind of seen it. As the economic downturn happens, and we have this, this economic prospect of the, of the quack economics, or what is known as quantitative easing or money printing, and the policy is just totally out of whack. And if we, I mean, if we go down that rabbit hole, and we keep printing and printing and printing, and then we maybe even go to like negative interest rates, um, I see that as a huge, huge advantage for gold and Bitcoin, because people need some kind of stability. And like, well, this is crazy. This makes sense over here. I'm going to get gold and Bitcoin silver. And I can see that why. I, I, I can see why that, that would happen. So when all this all these things were happening, I mean, it was awful to see, you know, some of my friends get laid off. Some of my friends' businesses closed down. Uh, but, I mean, it is awful. But on the flip side, I mean, I saw all of you uh, do very well in this cryptocurrency market because you would invest in the right things. So that's how I feel. But it's not just me. It's also, uh, you know, pretty smart guy in the space mike novogratz and this is from and i always play this uh clip if you if you've heard it just fast forward like two minutes but this is from unchained podcast this is laura shin she is a uh, legit journalist she has a lot of smart questions and she is in uh, my recommendations and in, in in my uh the description of every one of my videos i have a recommendation for all the different channels that i recommend and uh right now we're getting a little bloated i've got uh six so far but uh unchained is definitely one of those that i definitely recommend so i mean she's got a lot of great information a lot of good people on her show and uh it is uh it's one of those ones i try not to miss uh, and she's had some great guests so on this one she's got raul pal she's got mike novogratz and uh she asked a, she asked a pretty smart question like so what's this going to take for bitcoin to really go up but i'm wondering like so what is it that's driving those decision makers um like what is it about bitcoin that makes them think that this is the investment to make now during the time of the coronavirus is it just as simple as like bitcoin is scarce and we're about to see unlimited quantitative easing or is there anything kind of more it's just that simple. Well, like, so people ask me all the time. I, I bought more gold yesterday, even, and so I, I own gold and silver as well. But why Bitcoin versus gold? If you want to buy gold, there's 16 different ways to do it. It's very easy, and you can pick up and you buy an ETF. And so there's no adoption curve in gold. Where Bitcoin, there's still an adoption curve, right? A small portion of the institutional world has participated yet. And so as that adoption grows, you've just got a, a jacked up, up upside versus gold. You've got a jacked up upside versus gold, meaning that Bitcoin or 
um, digital gold is uh, the whole thing behind that. So, uh, yeah, I, I think the more, unfortunately, the more economic problems we have, the more different failed or, or horrible policies that we start to create. And I, I don't know if they're horrible, but uh, I mean, in the future it can't be great. So I see more people getting into Bitcoin and gold as those things start to uh, regress. So speaking of bad policies, let's go on to the next article. So this was actually sent to me. Uh, a couple of different people had said, hey, Coinbase is having problems, right? And uh, I want, first, I want to say thanks to XRP Crypto Wolf. He's the one that sent me the one uh, about uh, gold, Bitcoin, and economic policy. So thank you so much uh, for this one. So Jimmy G said, hey, there's another problem with Coinbase. And this is one of my, my complaints about Coinbase is that uh, they seem to break down at the most inopportune times. Uh, one of these times right now is uh, when Chainlink was going up uh, dramatically. And uh, that's a bummer. And this also happened uh, in March when there was a big dip. And it seems like when, when Bitcoin or some other type of uh, big cryptocurrency starts to make a move, it's like, ah, sorry, we can't do that. So I don't know how many billions of dollars you need to uh, fix that glitch, but uh, I think Coinbase has uh, more than a couple of those. So hopefully they can get that under control. But what had happened was, as uh, Chainlink was going up, um, the price on Coinbase stayed at the same. So it was around $11, even when uh, Chainlink was like $12 and something cents or $13 or whatever it was. And uh, that is a huge uh, advantage for people who wanna play arbitrage. So they had actually bought that, <laughs> they bought Chainlink, they pumped it off of, of the exchange into someplace else and then sold it like crazy. So yeah, that's a bummer. So that's not good. Uh, Coinbase, I mean, I always talk about this in my, um, uh, exchange Google spreadsheet these are all the ones that I use and I can only tell you that coinbase I will only recommend them as an off-ramp uh, when things get crazy for the parabolic bull run so as these things start to happen hopefully they can get under control but uh, yeah I don't it keeps happening so what are you gonna do anyhow just be careful out there and uh, um, stay safe and last up will this quantum computing breakthrough save Bitcoin and cryptocurrency this is from the daily hodl I like their their website, but I hate it because I cannot do any kind of markup. So I'm just going to read this as a, as, as I remember it. There's a new computing breakthrough that just may save Bitcoin. So this is what's going on. Researchers are following the development of a new measure known as Latisse-based cryptography that promised to make crypto technology more quantum proof, reports MIT Tech Review. And listen to this. This is where it gets crazy. Latisse-based cryptography may neutralize the massive comp computational capabilities of quantum computers by hiding data inside complex geometric structures that contain a grid huh, of infinite dots that are spread across thousands of dimensions. That sounds like a great DMT trip, but apparently it is science and technology. So there was always this, this big conversation about, well, when, you know, when quantum computing comes in, it's just going to break uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency digital assets because it'll be able to just, you know, unlock everything. And my, my argument was this, uh, if that actually happened and quantum computers were like normal, like a, uh, you know, just like a tablet, uh, the, the least we'd have to worry about is digital assets. That would mean that all the different banks that the entire globe would just be open because they're like, well, don't need the username and password because we have these quantum computers. So here we have a situation where there is something on the horizon. And this leads me to my point about what we will see as far as cryptocurrency digital assets moving forward. I always go back to the internet because we, if we look at the internet days, we can take a look at what's going on here. Back in the 90s, when I was in high school, because remember I'm old, I can just tell you this. Uh, when the internet came out, we had no idea what it was. Uh, we had knew, we knew it was all about information, sharing information, but we never thought that the governments would let it happen. We thought that the governments would shut it down because if we had all this information at our fingertips, then you know the, the, all the governments would crumble and, and it would be like uh, peace on earth and everything else. Well, that didn't happen. But I will just say this, that is that when you have these different aspects uh, coming about as far as the future, people don't know what's gonna happen. Like, can you imagine in 1993, if someone put a post for a job, like we need someone to do SEO services 
and we need someone to do Google AdWords and we need someone to do, uh, you know, Facebook advertising. They're like, what the heck? I, we don't even know what any of that stuff is. That makes no sense. It's the same thing right here with crypt with cryptocurrency digital assets. All the things that I mean, there's so many things that are going to change that we don't even know what they are yet. So, I mean, people can they can kind of guess at it and see what it's going to be. but We don't know. So the best thing we can do is just kind of take a look at all the different assets out there and go, OK, what does this solve and what can I do in the future? But I can guarantee my bottom dollar that one of the biggest digital assets probably hasn't even been created yet and it's just on the horizon and we won't know it until, <laughs> until it pops up so you know we'll see what happens but that's it for today's video so I want to say thanks for for hanging with me if you've noticed in the uh, in description of my videos I've had my recommendations and uh, I added one more uh, today uh, it's uh, Alex uh, Mascioli if you guys don't remember Alex Mascioli I had covered him in one of the CoinDesk articles where he talks about, uh, this was the OCC, uh, this is about, uh, you know, what, a couple weeks ago or so, about uh, crypto custody as far as like uh, banks go. And it was really good. And I was looking for uh, his YouTube channel and I came across this one, which I'm going to share with everybody, the rise of stable coins uh, with uh, with Ty.io CEO Josh Frank. And it's a really good uh, video. I actually post this in one of the community tabs. So if you have time, take a listen to that. Uh, I think Alex is one of those guys that he's one of those institutional guys who brings some of the smartest people into the space just like Laura Shin does. So I'm going to definitely recommend him and then go from there. I got to tell you, this recommendations uh, list is uh, is getting pretty bloated. So uh, somebody may drop off. But all these guys right here and gals, uh, I listen to uh, at least every couple of days or so. So if you got time, check those out. I'll link them at the very end. And also, I want to say thanks to all my members who have uh, signed up. If you don't know, there's a join now tab at the bottom. Uh, you don't get anything special when you join. It's just kind of like a tip. So uh, it's like a buck ninety nine. And everybody who signs up, I just do random shout outs. Uh, I used to charge more, but I thought that was just stupid. So uh, random shout outs. Eli Karchoff, Lenel Zapian, David David Griffiths, Sam Keats, and Sergeant Crypto, who also has a YouTube channel. Check it out. And then also DJ DJ Hauser. That's a good one. Crypto Swords, <laughs> Stevie A, Jono, and uh, Paul Jordan. So for everybody who has signed up, I want to say thanks. And uh, that is it for today's video. If you like those types of videos, there's going to be two more going to pop up on your left and right. Also, I have no control over the scam ads or ads that you see so do not blame the messenger if you have a problem go to youtube uh, because i have no control of the ads they pick them uh, they're in control and that's it for today so thanks a lot for watching see you on the next one